Today, I'm going to pull off a little bit of a coup. Remember when I put the automation engine into a BeamNG car to give me more engine options? Well, I have a little bit of a follow-up to that. When making a mod under vehicles, you can put any list of vehicles under there. Which means, if I wanted to go ahead and take pretty much every car and make it so then every car could take any sort of automation engine, well, you know, that would be possible. There is only, say for instance, one, you know, minor itsy bitsy witsy little bit of a problem. As you're seeing here, there's quite a few cars. And don't worry, there's more. Yeah, g quite a few more. In fact, altogether, it's about 34 vehicles. Now, this isn't quite so straightforward. BeamNG is quite an old game, quite very old. A lot of these do not mount the same way or even use the same engine node name sort of thing. Basically just they don't name things the way that they used to. So can I even do this for all vehicles? Is this going to prove to be too difficult? Well, the first thing I'm gonna have to get over is how to add engine mounts to a vehicle. Say for instance, we take a vehicle like this. If we have a look under their engine files here, we got these different sorts of engines, but in all of them, we have a thing called engine mounts. So if we go over here, we'll find engine mounts here. But in the engine mounts section, there's no nodes or anything made. It's just connecting off of these things called engine mounts or EM1R and EM1L. If I can. There we go, EM1L. Those nodes themselves are made here in the engine, which poses a little bit of an issue. The mounts are not made in the engine mount section. So if I was to put this engine into here, no matter how much I wanted those engine mounts to attach to that engine, they're just not going to be there. So that brings up a little bit of a conundrum. How am I going to take an engine and then be able to make it fit into a BeamNG car quite so easily. And even if you do fit the engine, how do you stop, say, something like this happening, where the engine doesn't really fit? Well, we're in luck. There's two things we can do. One, make sure that your engine that you're putting has a similar wheel-based vehicle as a starting point, uh, similar to the normal vehicle, and that the engine is in a very similar place as to where it might show up in the car. The other one is, is something that's already built into automation vehicles, which makes life a whole lot easier. Looking here at the automation car that I have just laying about, if we scroll down under our engine section, we have the ability to offset them. So, what's my plan? Well, I'm thinking in the part selector tree, for each individual vehicle, we're gonna create a new engine that is nothing other than being called an automation engine and only has engine mount nodes. That way the engine mount will be in there and then we'll have a slot type that allows us to drop in the engine. And all you're going to have to do is drag some stuff from your automation file that you've exported from automation to BMNG and plop it into a file and then it, it should work. Here's hoping. Now, just to contradict me, the Autobello Piccolina unfortunately doesn't have engine mounts. So we're gonna deal with that one a little bit later. Instead, we're gonna start off with something that's a little less fun. I swear to God, I never wanna see this mid-truck ever again. So let's start in our unpacked folder and make a mod called every engine for every car. Then in here, we're gonna create a folder called vehicles. Then the very first vehicle we're gonna make is the mid-truck. Then what we're gonna do is, oh, you know what? We may as well grab an engine from here. It doesn't particularly matter. Diesel, petrol, doesn't really matter. This we're gonna call the automation underscore swap. Rename a few things. You know, the important stuff. This is gonna be changed from mid truck auto swap. And then this is going to be automation engine. Slot type stays the same. Slots, we're gonna be getting rid of most of these. Uh, this one's just gonna stay as a template. Everything else can go except for engine mounts. So we're gonna keep nodes and we're gonna drop all of these and just keep that. As for beams, oh, you know what, actually, hold on. We're gonna need beams for now, but we don't need the ones that are in here. So this can go. Then oil pan doesn't matter. None of this matters. None of you matter. No, none of this. Uh, this is for the ECU, doesn't matter. Internals, doesn't matter. Uh, more internals more diesel turbo stuff. 
none of this is going to be kept. Wow, there's a lot in here that we don't need. I was expecting this to be a, a rather short one, but then I forget that they put all of the turbo stuff in here as well, which makes life just a little bit trickier for us. Because, you know, reasons. And then we're going to delete that bracket and there we go. This is basically all we need. Next, what comes up is we're going to play with this. So a slot is basically any part that'll fit in there. What we've done is created something that's basically akin to engine mounts. And now we've got the engine mounts there and we're going to add an engine to the engine mounts as opposed to what normally happens where we have the engine in Beam and G and adding the mounts to that instead. I don't know why it's like that in Beam and G, but okay. So having a look at any old automation engine, we're gonna go in and see what the engine slot is called. I believe it's automation engine, very simple like that. Camso engine, perfect. That will now go into the mid, no, hold on. No, that'll go into here. So now the next slot part that we can put in is a Camso engine. This can be blank and this is gonna be, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna call this engine mounts or wait, no, this is gonna be called automation engine. This part itself is a slot. So maybe we should call this automation engine mounts. Perfect. We also don't need this to be a core slot, so we can get rid of that. Now, just to replace all of these with the automation play stuff. It's a little bit tight in here, but we're gonna try to do a little bit of learning. So E1L and E1R, or just E1. Apparently there's only E side engines here and then L side mounts, or name, sorry. Is that correct? No, there's E, L and R. I'm so confuzzled. Apparently this has three engine nodes horizontally. Weird, I don't think I've ever seen that before. But luckily none of those ones get called here, so that's all fine. If we have a look at this automation vehicle, I happen to know that they just call things engine and then a number next to it. So EN1L will be engine five. E1L is now engine five. Then the right variant is engine four. You get the idea. We're just gonna go through this now. You know what? This is all super confusing. I do have a trick for this. Some of you may have seen this. Engine out, please. Perfect. And yes, the engine does lay on its side, so that'll make our lives just a little bit easier. That is basically all we should need. Now, we have this perfectly open folder here with nothing in it. Let's find just some old engine thing. I don't particularly uh, care what it is. We're gonna drag the art folder into here. Then we're gonna go into the vehicles, into mid truck, and then grab the vehicles, grab this and put that there. Now what should happen theoretically is I should be able to go in. Oh, this is really laggy now. Hopefully this engine that I've chosen is not particularly too old. Under engine, we now have automation engine mounts. Perfect. Okay. Any moment now, good. Uh, no engine is in there at the moment. And then under here, Engine, we got some sort of like 3.3 liter V8 engine. Perfect. It's it's in here, but it's in the wrong place, but that doesn't particularly matter. Let's move the engine forwards. I'm guessing like one to two and a half meters. Oh, this is an old mod. This vehicle doesn't even have engine movement yet. Well, we keep that in mind. What we're gonna want to do now is make an automation transmission that'll connect us to this transmission. This is actually quite difficult. What I learned from the last video I made, which is the twin engine one, a transmission can only take a clutch as an input and a clutch can only take an engine as an input. I have a bit of an idea. This Camzo transmission that we have by default, I think we can work with this. The mid truck transmission is in here some, there we go, transmission. I'm just gonna give this a new name. Then in here, we're gonna find all slot types and we're gonna change all of them to this. So I'm guessing there's a few different slots. Okay, yeah, there's the transmission for diesel. And then there's a flywheel, doesn't matter. Flywheel doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. You know what, actually? 
We can actually get rid of all of these things because they will be called later by the default game stuff. By that I mean all of this is going to stay exactly the same as the default vehicle, so we don't need to have it here. So anything that's not a transmission, like this flywheel, we can just go ahead and delete because we don't need it, so goodbye to you. The important thing here is main engine, which is the same as what it is in automation cars. I'm also noticing that our transmission mounts are gonna wanna attach to the old engine, so we should fix that too. No center nodes, which are these ones here without an L or an R next to it, unfortunately. And now we're gonna need to replace these engine names with the new engine names. So we can just kinda extrapolate here which one is which. Uh, engine six, good. Engine six isn't even here. Goodbye, engine six. Engine four R is the fourth one down. Fourth one down here is engine three. You get the idea. Then save this one, close that one, and then in here, under chassis, under the new engine automation engine transmission, we should have, good, okay, I believe that diesel five-seed manual and manual five-seed transmission are both from the BMNG vehicle. So let's go five-speed manual transmission. Engine does flop to the ground, unfortunately. I, that shouldn't be happening. Does it at least drive now? N no. Why? Powertrain visualizer. We have the engine going into a transfer case, rear drive shaft. Why isn't it going into where it needs to be? Is it the wrong transmission? Also, why are the engine mounts working? Attempt to index global MP cord network nil value. Stack, trace back, start, main chunk of line one at, oh uh, sorry, line at line, okay, uh, tr what? Chosen part has wrong slot type, requires cam so transmission, provided by part mid-truck transmission petrol M, is mid-truck transmission petrol resetting to default. What? Let's have a quick look at how the default vehicle does it. So under chassis, we have engine and transmission is in here. So we got five speed manual transmission. Then it's got the range selector. So this prop shaft should go into here. But this one, it's got engine clutch here, drive shaft, drive shaft. What? Flywheel and prop shaft. If we have a look at this one now under automation engine. We have a transfer case. That's not right. Let's go diesel. Does does that help us at all? No. This has the right cam slow cam cam slow cam so transmission fit. Let's go in and see how this thing's engine works. Now this is a very old vehicle by the looks of it. We got powertrain here. Good. Okay. Well, that's in the right area. The next call to powertrain is under a transmission, and the one after that is also in the transmission. After that is under gearbox. Okay, well, apparently gearbox isn't transmission, but okay. Wait, no, hold on. No, it is under transmission. Next one is under transfer case. Yeah, so I don't understand why this is having such- Okay, you know what? We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get rid of whatever this vehicle- Oh, I can't get rid of it. God damn it. Maybe if we close up BMNG. Now hit delete. Nope. Why does Windows always do this to me? All I want to do is delete a folder with a bunch of files in it. And it just goes, I'm sorry. We're not going to let you do that. All right, it looks like I'm going to have to restart Windows. Two very boring minutes later. And now let's try deleting it. Good. Windows. Why is that so difficult for you to figure out? Even though it doesn't particularly matter, we're going to delete the art folder as well. Let's instead grab a much more freshly exported vehicle, then go into the mid truck section and just drag this whole thing in. Now, if we're lucky, under this section here, Automation engine. It's not even showing an engine this time. Okay, control L. Let's see if that fixes the issue. For those of you that don't know, uh, alt L, or oh, sorry, control L will kind of not refresh the vehicle, but refresh the game just a little bit. It works sometimes. And this time it worked as well. Apparently we got a 1.8 liter ethanol. Okay, well that's gonna throw up an issue because automation calls the ethanol engine something different from the normal vehicle. So make sure that your engines are just straight petrol. Then under transmission, we should have, here we go. So we got manual and diesel. 
Let's see if that works, please? No, that's a lot of issues. I'm gonna refresh and try this again. So just a quick control R and any moment now. Uh, no, okay, let's relaunch the game because currently it's saying that it can't find materials, I think, but all the materials are in here. It should work. Hopefully this fixes it. Can't find relevant gearbox device with name gearbox. Attempted to form arithmetic on globe. What? All right, weird. And relevant gearbox devices, wrong type expected manual gearbox, actual DCT gearbox. Let's clear this out and put in the right sort of transmission and let's see what happens. Nope. Same issues. Great. Why does it have such a problem with going to the right gearbox? In fact, I actually went back to the automation gear. That's weird. Let's go diesel five. No. All right, let's see what the problem is. It has manual gearbox. Why is this being a pain in the butt cheeks? Oh, wait, does this ask for a custom controller or something? So powertrain, main engine, combustion engine goes to... No, this is the only thing in here. Have I got the wrong sort of... Tra okay, so this is called Canzo Transmission. Is that the right sort of slot? It should be. A quick refresh and a quick engine try to the five-speed manual and no such luck. Eventually. I did it. And I did it off camera because otherwise that would have been like an hour of me just futzing about and wasting all of my computer hard drive space. It's actually not been too particularly difficult. The first thing I did was realize that I made the engine mounts, but then the engine mounts didn't attach to anything. So I came in here and I made sure that the engine mounts were actually attaching to things, not just attaching to the engine. The second thing I did was, you know, just ignore pretty much all of the transmission stuff. So it uses all of the default automation stuff. And then the transfer case, which is default, actually not on the transmission, like pretty much every other vehicle, but instead the range box is here. So I've got this to take in from the e transmission. Now that does leave a little bit of a byproduct here, but that doesn't particularly matter because these mods are not meant to be perfect. This is meant to be just if you want to have some fun. So that's one vehicle down. Oh yeah, I also made a new vehicle and this was four wheel drive as well. I don't know if that's important, but I made it to match this. It's also just straight petrol, much like this one is. And it's also a manual like this one is. Try to match your transmissions up, I found as well. That is quite important. Also, if you're wondering why uh, I don't think that these mods should be shared publicly once you've done them, is really this is meant to be just something for you. If you try to put it on the BMG repository, then the BMG repository people are going to be like, you've got a lot of stuff in here that you don't need. So we're probably going to reject this. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of wastefulness here. This is not the perfect way to do a mod. This is just if you want to have a quick and easy way to stick an engine in a vehicle. Now to select the next one, the Brockwell Bastion. Hmm. Okay. Let me run you through the process of making a vehicle. You're first going to want to start off with creating a new vehicle, finding something that has a similar engine placement. So say for instance, this and same sort of wheelbase. So that looks good to me. None of this particularly matters. Steel, then the same engine orientation. So front longitudinal, similar suspension, doesn't really particularly matter. Then pick your engine, say I want to stick an inline six in there for whatever reason, make it nice and small because this engine is going to be quite big. Somewhere around two liters for an inline six. That sounds good to me. Then none of this particularly matters. This is make whatever engine you want. I'm not doing really a whole lot of effort here. 212 kilowatts from a twin turbo nat uh, uh, six cylinder. Almost said naturally aspirated, but that would be an oxymoron. Moving along, none of this matters. Skipping along. This is just a real drive vehicle. Uh, ooh, I don't actually know what sort of transmission. I'm gonna go with a manual anyway. Something like a six speed. The differential also doesn't particularly matter. We're just going to go with a clutched LSD. None of this matters. Actually, you know what? Hold on. This might matter if you want to have this. So I'm going to go ABS. Brake suffer from brake fade? Don't care. Now, into the paint section. The only one we're going to look at here is a running gear. And that is going to get painted transparent. So then that way it uh, draws the transmission from the normal vehicle and not from here. The name of this doesn't particularly matter, but if you want to stop things being a mess, I'm just going to call this the Bruckle Swap and New Engine. Doesn't really matter. 
Now, export this. And perfect. That's all you need to do. And then you just drag the files in. Now all I have to do is make the area for the thing. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't need this no more. Oh, uh, well, frick. Let's try deleting that again. No, okay. Well, it doesn't want to go away. Either way, back when we remember where we had vehicles and then mid truck. Now we're going to create a new one. And this one's going to come from the Bastion. So under vehicles, we're going to have a folder here called Bastion. New folder, Bastion. Done. We're now going to grab engine mounts, if engine mounts are in here. Perfect. Swapping. And we're going to do a very, very similar thing. So we got beams here for all of these things we're going to hold on to. These are experimental, so we can get rid of those, actually. I'm going to get rid of everything except that one, so get rid of those. Uh, engine mounts heavy. Oh, you know what, actually? We might just keep engine mounts heavy. Or ultra. You know what? We're going to keep Ultra. Out of the new vehicle, we need to grab that engine mount name again because I've already forgotten it. Look at their engine quickly. Camso engine. That's right. Done. We're also going to need a slot section. Uh, get rid of the ones we don't want. And I think we just did this, didn't we? And then get rid of that. Is that all I need to do to get started? Uh, no. Okay, that's wrong. This is not right. I don't have the common files open, which is where the engines are. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to grab from body. There'll be a slot here for engine. There we go. Engine. Grab that. And that goes in there. That's how you do it. Now let's refresh. And the engine, ultra heavy G Okay, well, I didn't rename it, but, uh, that's weird. Chosen part was wrong slot type, requires bastion engine provided by, okay. Oh, wait, hold on. This is the wrong, okay, so this gets changed now. Bastion engine swap. We're also going to change the name of this so we know what it is. Automation engine. Now, if we have a look in here, automation engine, perfect. And this time it sticks. Noise. Except there's nothing in here. Now, with the new engine, just click and drag, and that should be enough to at least get us started. Uh, we don't have a transmission working yet, but we'll give it a try. Engine automation. En okay, well, that's not working. Let's control L this quickly. There we go. Now we have the engine. So the two liter double overhead cam in line six. And nothing's connected. Great. Not even the engine mounts, which I just realized why. It's because I did all of the mounts now connecting the mounts to the body, but the engine doesn't connect to the mounts, and the mounts don't exist. More levels are smart, but you've seen that already, so we're just gonna do that off screen. Now, with this done, this engine should stay in place, hopefully. Good. It does. Except it doesn't quite line up, but it'll do. Let's remove the hood to see what it actually looks like. Pretty darn close. It's a little wibbly wobbly. Tuning, we can move the engine forwards a little bit, which might help. It looks like engine offset Y. Let's move that forwards. Maybe like 10, 20 centimeters. So 0.2 offset and apply. And that was the wrong way. Negative 0.2, because more negative is more forwards, because that makes sense. And the engine is pretty darn close. Now the only thing we have to do is get this attaching to this. Hmm. I think what we'll do is grab, let's use that. No, you know what? We'll let you choose your own transmission. So let's go with rear, no, it wouldn't be rear suspension. It'd be differential, which is drive shaft. I suppose we could use drive shaft. Let's bring out a default vehicle to see what the difference is. This has a transfer case as well, and then a rear drive shaft. So because the drive shaft here is animated, I think I would like that. So maybe let's go straight from the transmission to attach. Let's go ahead and grab the transmission then. Change the slot type to probably just automation, right? And let's give it a look. Engine, automation, engine, transmission. Uh, no. Oh, camso transmission. I'm an idiot. All right. There we go. Then transmission. Manual transmission for automation cars. Hey, perfect. It works straight off the bat. Look at that. Now, we do have an exhaust issue. But I sp there's not a whole lot we could do about that right now. Or is there? Let's grab the exhaust. Perfect. That was the wrong place. 
Let's go back to the right place, and we can delete this later. Bastion exhaust. And then this is going to have a slot type of... Uh, you know what? Let's try. Camso. Engine structure. Exhaust. Nope. And right, well, this has all we need here. Under the engine structure, we are looking... Oh, it's a capital C. So let's paste that in there. And as you can see, our floppy exhaust. Under engine structure... New engine exhaust, exhaust pipes, good. That's probably, okay, well, flex body area, bastion transmission nodes not found. Hmm, is this meant to attach to transmission nodes? I wonder. Okay, yeah, we got a lot of engine stuff in here. Save those changes, and it's still not drawing the transmission. I think I know why that might be. It's because it wants more engine nodes because the engine nodes of the engine also are part of the transmission group to draw the transmission but i don't want to have it so then you have to edit the automation engine for this to work i have an idea what if we go into the new engine mount swaps file we made and under here we could potentially give these a group this is called bastion transmission paste that in there come back to here and are we lucky enough? Yes, we are. Okay, so it draws up to the transmission. Now we know that the engine is too high. I've already dropped it down 10 centimeters. Let's drop that down another five. Apply. Now, what's that going to do? That's getting us really close. Let's drop that a few more to 17 centimeters down. And you know what? That's looking pretty good to line up to the transmission. I'm loving it. It's just this silly exhaust won't work. Is it... Uh, you know what? This is probably wanting to call upon a whole bunch of engine nodes. So scrolling down, we see a lot of... Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. It's got a lot of these now. Replace all of this. I don't care which one this goes to. Engine one. Sure. This one will replace that with engine two. And then all of the rest is you get the idea. Please work exhaust pipes. Sure. Damn it. Chosen part has wrong slot. Oh, I forgot to change the name of this to be something different. Otherwise, it tries to uh, replace the original with the new one. But then it says that the original one has the same slot name. So it then, yeah, things get a bit tricky. So you got to rename these. We also don't need any of these other slots because those are drawn normally. Oh, hold on. From here under slots. And then they'll go back to using the default stuff. And this time, exhaust pipes. Are you going to be my friend? Yes, you are. Uh, ignoring all of that. Wrong talk. Uh, don't care about that. Oh, okay. There's uh, no exhaust nodes. Uh, great. Build an exhaust tree failed. Uh, engine thermals disabled. Bugger. I suppose engine thermals don't really matter, but let's see what we can do. I think if we change this to something like engine one, let's see if that works. I, I just looked for like the earliest number and hopefully it'll work. Nope. Uh, you know what? Actually, we're probably looking for exhaust one R or L. So it would be one that also has. Yeah, so that's what I probably should have changed. Let's go back to engine structure and find what the very first exhaust connection is, which looks to be engine five. OK, usually it pulls off of the transmission for some weird reason, but OK. I think what we'll do is we'll duplicate this, then call this one engine five. I don't know, I don't know if the order matters, but we'll have a look. Hey, look at that! Duplicate, no, uh, yeah, that doesn't particularly matter. Wrong no, uh, vehicle, look, okay. Now it looks like we have exhaust thermals enabled! Noise! And with our new engine, that is apparently really slow, let's go ahead and turn off ESC. Look at that! Gutless as all hell! But at least we're able to get it to drift, though. Noise.
Oh my god, this episode is going to be way too big if I add more vehicles to this. So I'm thinking... One more? Don't worry. I think I'm going to come back to this in future episodes, and we're going to go, like, a, a few at a time, and this will be an ongoing series. You know, finding all of the problematic ones. Like, I just know that the semi-truck is going to be a problem, because that thing doesn't have engine mounts. I suppose the next one is the Brockle Legrand. Oh no, it's a transverse. Does it even have the option to go? Probably doesn't have the option to go front uh, rear wheel drive, does it? Front wheel drive, front wheel drive, front wheel drive, or more front wheel drive. Oh no, they're all front wheel drive. Oh, there's one all wheel drive. Great. Oh dear. Hey, look at that. There's actually one called Legrand. That makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to grab the name of this. Put a folder there, grab an engine, V6, sure, why not? Get rid of all but one of these. I think this is meant to be like cam so engine. This can go away. Uh, this will be automation engine. And the core slot means that it should automatically select one. Yeah, I think we'll uh, stay with that. Get rid of powertrain, main engine, all of this, sound config, don't need any of you. Flex bodies, nodes. We'll hold on to nodes. Get rid of all of the engine nodes themselves. And I think this may be called Legrand Transmission. Here's hoping it works the same way as the Bastion. Otherwise I'll have to come and do fix this later. Do fix this later? My brain is fading. Delete the beams we don't need. Change all of these over. Get rid of triangles altogether. And then apparently there's different engines. We don't need these others, don't need oil pans. You can go away. There's a lot of things in here that we just don't need. So, goodbye. Let's go ahead and grab the Bastion engine swap. Doesn't particularly matter too much and chuck you in there. Now, let's swap our engine automation mount. Perfect. Then, okay, no options. Is the Camso engine wrong? Wait, hold on. Let's exit out of this control L quickly. Control, oh wait, hold on. This thing is acting all levels of funny over here now. Oh, strange. Uh, let's come down to, oh, that's right. Yeah, we have automation, no, no engine. Unable to understand vehicle path. Weird. It isn't even showing a front Differential? Differential? Differential. Weird. What have I done wrong here? Camps? Oh, it's meant to be capital C. Alright, there we go. Yep, I'm an idiot. And I feel that the differential is probably meant to be in here. So that's a bit of an issue. Automation engine is now here. Good. Two liter inline six. It was meant to work. Oh, that's right. Once again, I've only attached the engine mounts to the engine. Engine mounts. Grab these attaching it to the frame. Slop that in about here. And now if I refresh, it will... Pretend, nope, okay. Grabbing this. D does it want to mount a transmission? We got both engine mounts for left and right, which I've put here. They'd, oh, that's right, yeah, they're not attaching to the body. That's why I had these here. So are these not attaching to the right place? We have left and rights. Then some engine stabilizers, weird. Let's grab some things over here. We got F12Ls, but this is only attaching. No, 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 they are attaching to R as well. Okay, well, I don't get it. Maybe what I should do is duplicate this, change this to LL and LL, then this side. So we get a little bit of like cross chatter happening here. So then it doesn't matter what sort of engine you have and save that. Then in here, control R. And no such luck. Where is the engine mount? Should be here somewhere, right? Wait, hold on, I know what the issue is. Because I duplicated this to have an L and an R, for some reason it didn't. Yeah, this became a bit of an issue. So, this is gonna be positive for right, I think. Then we're gonna move it forwards ever so slightly, or backwards ever so, I don't know, whatever. Now, if we come back in, with it not being slow-mo. Close. We're gonna want a transmission node in here at some point. Do we, oh, it's a trans axle, okay. These are all gonna have to change, but we'll change that in a second. Slot type should be capital, cam-so? Is that, 
Is that the right thing to do? Do we have the... Nope, no worky do. Of course, capital T. Good, new transmission selection now. And perfect. It's not attached. All right, let's find... So we got all of these. Okay, these we need to change out. Now that that's done, save. Come back into here, refresh, and... Our V... Okay. That wasn't meant to happen. Broken beams from transmission... Okay. Hmm. Does it still drive? Nope. Great. That that's what I love to see. It does show that we have main engine to tr torque converter to transmission to transfer case, torque reactor, and differential. It's just this was unhappy. Let's change beam spring, maybe? Maybe it's a little too taut? Let's take that down by 10%? Or maybe that's... No, that's not 10%. Divided by 10. No, yeah, divided by 10. That's... I'm not good at math. Hopefully it won't break now. Great. Let's try putting in this dampener thing. Not entirely sure what it is, but we'll give it a try. Does it fix the issue? Oh. Hey, actually, it did. Will I actually drive out? It will drive. Yes, okay. We have our engine in here. Let me guess. Exhaust floppy on the ground? Exhaust is floppy on the ground. Great. Love it. But I should be able to fix this not too bad. We got exhaust and exhaust all... I think we're just gonna go with exhaust for now. And then this is gonna have to be... Let me guess. Capital C. Camso. Capital E. Whoop. Nope, there we go. And make sure this is different. And under engine structure. Exhaust... Okay, well. Let's go back in and see what that engine structure says it is. Exhaust is little e. <laughs> go ahead and fix that issue. Our new exhaust mesh. Good. Let's go with like a race one for now. Please hold in place. Yes, it's worked. And okay. Do we have engine thermals? Maybe. I don't. Oh, no, we won't have engine thermals. Yep, no exhaust. Okay, good. Uh, which one was it? I believe it was... We had to grab this and then put engine five in there, I believe. Now, this is going to have a bit of issues if you have a dual exhaust, but once again, as I said, this is not meant to be a perfect mod. With a quick refresh here. And... Okay, I'm not seeing any issues. If we accelerate... I don't see any exhaust coming out, but at least apparently we have engine thermal, so that's a thing that we have. Good. I wonder if this works with the all-wheel drive setup as well. I haven't said specifically it couldn't do that. So let's grab the all-wheel drive version of this. Is it Rally? Uh, all-wheel drive? Good. Nothing else has all-wheel drive, right? It's just that. Oh no, th there are road ones. Let's go ahead and replace that beautifully supercharged 3.8 litre V6 with our automation inline engine with some turbos on it. Make sure that our transmission is uh, set to something so like a four speed manual transmission, maybe. That seems unhappy. I think I only changed all of these values for just the three speed auto. And I don't know if these are for all-wheel drive vehicles. Let's try the three-speed automatic. Well, that seems to be working, but we're not connected to the rear. Transfer case, all-wheel drive transfer case, and hey, look at that. It looks like we have all of our drive. I mean, we just have to go in and <laughs> change the uh, drive, uh, the, the, the exhaust and everything again. But my goodness gracious. This literally will take you minutes to do. What you would do is you'd go to your mods folder, you would find the new mod that we created, which is, oh God, uh, every engine for every car, then click, which will say unpack, then open an explorer under vehicles, find the vehicle you want, say the Legran, and then you'll drag in that file that I told you. Hey presto, done. I mean, sure, there's some part selection sort of stuff that you'll need to do. Uh, much like the exhaust that we had. That's the thing you're going to have to fiddle with every single time. And potentially, if you haven't lined up the engine correctly, you're going to have to do that as well. And then just have fun. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know what? Hold on. 
I have an idea. If there's anything that BMW and both Ford have shown, that an inline front, a rear wheel drive turbo six cylinder is really the way to do it. So it looks like we have nothing on the front now. And we have just rear drive. Oh yes. Oh God, oh, okay, around we go. Oh dear. Duck, turn, turn. And I think I have, is that a locker in the rear, I think? That's pretty awesome. Oh. oh, okay. You know what? Once again, as I've shown, you really do need to tune suspension if you're going to do an engine swap. And this thing could really do with an, a bit of a, a tune. The engine is also a little bit wobbly in there, but it's nice and set up specifically. So then you can fit a slightly wider array of engines. But you know what? There's one last thing I would like to say. To all you new viewers, how many subscribers do you think I actually have? Now you can go check and then decide whether you think I deserve to be subscribed to. I suppose there's two things I want to say actually. Because I also want to thank my channel members, and that specifically includes DeHellerman for being a top tier channel member. For the rest of you, I'll catch you all next time when maybe I might in the future be doing another bunch of these engine swaps, you know, maybe with a little bit of better driving. Next time, goodbye. God, I suck at driving.